Hey, what's up, everybody? Fred Minnick here, and today I'm going to go over my top 100 and some of the common questions I have been receiving. Now, I've been doing this for a few years now. My top 100 is essentially my effort to reward uh, American whiskeys that really, really excite me. And they will be across all categories. Like, for example, I have single malts, I have corn whiskeys, I have bourbons, I have blends of straights, I have barrel finishes, I have rye. You know, the gambit is in that uh, top 100. If you want to see the list as it is right now, it's in alphabetical order on my website, fredminnick.com. You can find a link to it in the description. And, um, you know, go check that out. Put it in the comments section what you think is missing. I'm going to address a few of the common ones that people have been thinking uh, that should be on that list. So a little bit about the background to the top 100. So I was a, I was a longtime reviewer for uh, Whiskey Advocate. And when I left there, I started doing a blind tasting for whiskeys of the year. Now, I've always been a part of these spirits competitions. Uh, the spirits competitions are different than the individual critic rating. So an individual critic is basically one person's opinion. So this is, a, this is just my opinion. It's not a panel. It's not a it's not a group of people deciding what they think is the best whiskey. In fact, I'm often on the opposite side of a lot of my colleagues. For example, I really did not like William Leroux Weller this year. A lot of people love that one. There's also a couple others that uh, a lot of people really love. I'll talk about those in a minute uh, that I did not care as much for. So I started doing my top 100 as a way of uh, rewarding uh, as many whiskeys as I could. What this ends up being is it, it tends to be a um, an effort for me every single time I taste something, I lodge it in my head as is this a top 100 contender. And where I'm tasting, I have a spirits competition. I co-own a competition called the American Spirits Council of Tasters. And we uh, we've been in business for for three years, and it's just like San Francisco World Spirits Competition, uh, or the former Ultimate Spirits Competition. We we take entries, distillers send us product, and the professional judges. Everyone is like a, a buyer or a critic of some sort, but they're in the business. You know, this is not a consumer facing one. These are people who taste every single day, and um, are tasting. Um, using their professional acumen in, in a tasting. And so when something wins that competition, this year I started putting it forward. So something like uh, Journeyman Corsets uh, Whips and Whiskey, uh, that, won, that, that won that competition. E.H. Uh, e. Taylor won Best Bourbon. That, so I put those two forward. I put a couple other forward too that got high scores. So if something had a very, very high score for me, I put it forward as well. So like one of my highest scores in the Ascots this year, believe it or not, was an everyday bottle that you can find, um, I know, all over Kentucky and throughout the United States of America. And that was just regular old Green River. You know, the, the standard small batch Green River uh, scored exceptionally high for me in the Ascots. So I put that forward in this year's list. Uh, something else I started doing this year is I do these events all over the country called Blind Bourbon. And Blind Bourbon is where I have an audience, uh, you know, 300, 500, as small as like 50. Uh, but I'll have an audience and we will all taste together and they vote. So this entire audience will vote on what their, what their favorite is. And I'll usually put an allocated product in there. And I'll put like some everyday products in there as well. And the allocated products have only won one time, one time in my history of doing this. Um, and that was Blanton's. Blanton's won uh, Blind Bourbon Tulsa. And that was, you know, that was my very first one, actually. So usually it's these uh, like something like Old Forester 100 made it forward from that, from a Blind Bourbon taste off. Uh, Michter's US 1 Bourbon beat Calumet 16 year old. Uh, and Rare Breed, I don't remember what Rare Breed won, but Rare Breed won, and it beat uh, it beat two allocated items that I recall. So those are three entries from from that um, right away. So uh, those are some of the new um, new ways things have gotten in. I've also, of course, been doing reviews for Club Marzipan 
here on this channel. Uh, and also, I incorporated a lot of just like on the on the street tastings. Well, not on the street, but like kind of out and about. Um, like this year, I didn't do as many public facing reviews as I normally do because my my personal schedule has gotten very very busy. Um, you know, kids, and I'm very proud that I've 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 changed my life in a lot of ways. But I got involved in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu a year ago, right here. This is my gym right here, uh, made in uh, in Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky, of course. But that has become priorities. So um, my I've not cut down on my tastings. I've cut down on my reviews, and I've given a lot of reviews over to Club Marzipan, and I'm doing a lot more in the written form than on video because it takes so much. It takes so much time to do a video, a tasting video, and put it up here on on YouTube. So I do my very best. Um, I still tasted about 900 products this year, but they haven't all been in like um, review settings as they have in the past. And so my big feeders into into what I tasted this year were the Ascots. I tasted uh, a few hundred through the Ascots, and that probably was the bulk of where I did a lot of my tastings. Uh, YouTube and Club Marzipan reviews obviously got a got a big amount of them as well. Uh, but just kind of going out and like when I would be somewhere uh, at, at an event, I would taste through things and I'd make mental note. And so now I want to go through, uh, there's been commentary everywhere, right? Anytime I put out a list, people hate it, they love it, they think there's things missing. That's part of it. And when you do this, you have to, you have to be okay with that. You cannot put out a, a list of this magnitude and get sensitive about people saying, oh, you should have had that in there. You suck. If, if you're going to be sensitive about those kinds of things, do not become a critic <laughs> because uh, you're out there giving your opinion on things. You better expect people come back to you with opinions. So that is, that's part of it. I will say in comparison to years past that I probably received the least amount of shit I've ever gotten in my career. So... Um, I, I don't know what that says, but I know that people, uh, the amount of people who read my, my article and the amount of uh, people who uh, picked it up in the news media and everything, uh, it definitely got some eyeballs. But the least amount of criticism I've ever gotten for my top 100 list. But there were, there were four products, four products that people really did not understand why they weren't on the uh, top 100 list. And to me, that's like, it's almost kind of like, wow, only four? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm catching heat for only four products not being on there. So I want to go over those uh, real quick. And then I have some specific questions from um, a few members from Club Marzipan. So I put, in the, I put in the group the other day, like, hey, what, uh, what is, uh, what's something that, you know, you want to ask me about the top 100 that, you know, that's on your mind. And so I got some very good questions from them. Uh, so one of the number one products that was asked of me, like, why wasn't this in there, was Michter's 10-year-old. Now, Michter's 10-year-old absolutely was a banger this year. Beautiful, delicious. Uh, I have two Michter's products on the list, uh, Michter's Toasted Rye and, of course, that Michter's US1 Bourbon I mentioned earlier. But if you read the article, which I know that's not always uh, the case, people just go straight to the list. But if you read the article and you read the criteria, I do not consider single barrels. Um, and specifically, the released must have at least 500 bottles in existence. Now, I will tell you that we had to bump a couple products because they kind of snuck in under the radar. And as we were doing our last minute fact checking, we found out in need that one of them was a single barrel. And then we also found out one uh, had been discontinued. So I had, the, uh, had an old Potrero uh, rye on the original list and it was discontinued. So it's like, it's not, it's, it's out there in some stores. I bought it here in Louisville. So I have no idea uh, how long it's been discontinued. But 
Earl Petrero was originally on this list, but they the, the product was discontinued, and, you know, it is what it is. But so Michter's 10-year-old did not make it on here because of of it basically being a single barrel. Uh, a couple other products that that were asked a lot of me on this one was Russell's Reserve 13-year-old. Um, look, Russell's Reserve 13-year-old won it for me, uh, I think, in 2020 or 2021. That was my... But since that first release, it's just been disappointment. Just been absolute disappointment for me. And I, I don't know what else to say. And I don't have, a, I don't have that review out there it was something that i tasted kind of like i was telling you all the same with the uh, russell's reserve rick house the latest release that came out also a disappointment and the one common note that i can tell you that's in there is like it's like a like a grassy note and like i i don't know if it's from faulty corks i don't know what it is but the 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 releases that i have tasted have not been um of the caliber that um you know that that i feel like they should be i will tell you that you know, Wild Turkey has two products in, you know, so they have uh, uh, their Voyage um, is in, I think it's called Voyage. I don't know, it's their barrel finish. It's their Master's Keep barrel finish. I can't remember what they called it. Um, and Rare Breed is in it. And Rare Breed is, a, you know, that's a contender no matter where it's at. And the Generations release, that was knocking on the door. It was probably about, if I were to, if I didn't, if I didn't have the automatic bids from Blind Bourbon, uh, uh, Wild Turkey Generations would have been in. So that was like, and that that was probably the last one out. Um, if there was, if there was, if there is any issue with us being able to get product to pour in, Wild Turkey Generations is the alternate uh, to come in. So, if in the way that uh, I kind of ranked this out, Wild Turkey Generations would be 101. Just, I mean, it, I, I really liked it, but, um, you know, when it comes down to it, there was just not everything is based on taste to, to select. And I'll talk a little bit more about this in a second on some of the Club Marzipan questions. But there was there's a moment where you're like, you can't put I can't put the, you know, 100 bourbons in. It's I, it's American whiskey. So I have to make sure that I'm getting representation of corn whiskey in here, which I've got uh, a Frey Ranch corn whiskey. Got to make sure I have a representation of blended straights, uh, single malt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and the wild turkey generations was just, was just on the outside. And I'll tell you, like, if you're going to, if you ask me the question, like, well, you really liked it in your review, but you put something forward like Kentucky Peerless High Rye Bourbon. You're telling me you like the Kentucky Peerless High Rye Bourbon over that one on a taste off? And I'm saying yes. I mean, yes, I did. But I still like the Generations. It doesn't mean I don't like the Generations. I just like that other one more. And so that's why something like Peerless is on the list and G Generations is not. So anyway. Um the other one, the big one that I got a lot of was 13th Colony Double Oak. I actually, I knew I tasted this, but I had not, I had not fully, um, I, I didn't know where I tasted it. I knew, I knew I tasted it when I was going through my notes, trying to figure out, uh, compile everything. And this was like a, like a month ago. I was going through all of my tastings with the Ascots, which we're looking at you know three four hundred things i tasted blind all in a spreadsheet all like noted out and then the handbook where i've got notes and everything and i'm along with like four or five other judges uh who are tasting the same thing and i'm like going through it and i'm like oh there's 13th colony i tasted it i was the low score on the panel for t the 13th colony double up now all the other judges loved it. I mean, they rated it so high that my low score could not stop it from getting a double platinum. And that, that's that's what a competition is. A competition is is a group of people deciding the fate of, of, the, of the spirits. Whereas here, it's just me. So it's just a singular person. But 13th Colony Double Oak was... It, it was probably the eighth or ninth ranked um, 
you know, double oaked or barrel finish for me in, in the Ascot. So, you know, you can just take a look through the list that I have here. So you can tell, you can tell that would be uh, probably on the outs there. But I specifically had a notation that I got a, it tasted like saccharin. Like I had like this hint of saccharin, you know, the little pink packet that you put in your iced tea. And I don't know, that just, it just stuck with me. And it and it didn't it didn't work. Now I know this has become a fan favorite. I know there this this brand has tons of fans for this particular product, and that's fantastic. I'm glad you all like it, but I can't put forth something just because it's popular uh, in the whiskey community. I mean, if I did, that'd be a pretty dishonest list. And you know, if I'm anything, I, I'm honest. And I just didn't I didn't like the Thirteenth Colony Double Oak enough. To, to put it forward and that is I guess that is what it is a couple others um, that did not come up but I thought I would address the this one I gave a pretty high review on the uh, old Fitzgerald bottled and bond that is a product that was in fact uh, I thought would be on the you know when I tasted it, I was like this is either gonna be the uh, the last 30 in or uh, the last 30 out and it was, it was on the last 30 out range and and you know the the decanter series this year was just kind of a miss for me just not enough oomph to it um, you know something else I did not taste as many smoke wagons uh, as I have in years past so you know I can only put forth things that I have tasted and so I know that that there were a ton of great smoke wagons put out I just never got to taste them and there's there's a handful of other brands like I didn't get to taste like Pat the uh, the Pappy Van Winkle line I didn't get to taste at this year, and in fact they haven't even been released in the in my area yet so and they're definitely not sending samples of that. Uh, I didn't I didn't consider things like the Mictors 25 or the Eagle Rare 25, for partly because they came in so late I could not I could not in good conscience uh, hold hold my list any longer. So, uh, and in order for me to do the tasting right, I had to, I had to, I had to conclude it at some point. And so, and even today, there are releases of like more products are coming out. So at some point, you have to like close your window of when you're tasting for for the list. And so I closed it. Um, I think November. I think I closed it November fifteenth or something like that. Now I did have to do a few taste offs. I did those in Club Marzipan here and there, but um, but yeah, that's that's kind of it. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into some of the questions from Club Marzipan. Now, this is my whiskey community where I go in and we do a lot of education, a lot of exclusive content. They get, they get first crack at my barrel picks, um, you know, such as the uh, Jack Daniels uh, barrel pick, this hazmat one I just did with uh, Jay Rieger. Uh, I've got a lot of things that we're doing over there. If you want to learn more about Club Marzipan, head on over, um, head on over to my, on, into the description to learn more. So, all right. So, first question uh, comes from Derek. Let me move that over here. Uh, Derek asked a question. Um, from so Derek Cap asked, are are there any distilleries that used to get in but have fallen short lately? Yeah, I, I, I would say uh, a pretty obvious one uh, would be Diageo. Diageo didn't have any uh, products in there, to my knowledge. Maybe um, yeah, and their, their core products of American whiskey, like Dickel, Bullet, Blade & Bow, they did, not, they did not get in there. Now, I, I absolutely did taste those products, uh, but I just, didn't, I just didn't think that they were... Uh, up to snuff. Now, Dickel did announce, uh, I believe it was an 18-year-old, around the time that I had concluded my list, and I have no doubt that that 18-year-old Dickel would be absolutely outstanding. But usually, usually George Dickel has some representation in here. <laughs> They're just a part of the blend of straights. So uh, there is Diageo whiskey in here, just not on, uh, not not in their name. Okay, so this question from uh, Club Marzipan member John Wilkinson. I love the variety of the list. Does variety factor in selecting the top 100? 
It absolutely does. Uh, and the reason why is that I think, you know, you have to, if you call it an American whiskey list, but you make it all bourbon, is it an American whiskey list? So I do have to factor that in. And I have a, I have a formula that's in my head that kind of makes sense to probably nobody but me. But it is, uh, the, the hard one are single malts. Um, because there's a lot of really good single malts, but they're all over the place. So if you, if you don't have, if you don't have an appreciation for some of the particular notes that come from an American single malt, you may not appreciate the ones that are on this list. Um, and I think it's, I think that's the best way I can put it, but yeah, so variety does matter, but when it comes to the blind tasting, no. It does not matter then. Uh, and the blind tasting, it's whatever I like. Um, however, however, it kind of hits my palate. That's the that's the main thing for me in the blind tasting is how does it smell and taste, and of course finish. All right, this one comes from Club Marzipan member uh, James Daly. When tasting blind, do you know the whiskey right away? Um, absolutely not, and you cannot. Here's the thing about doing a blind tasting in any kind of competition. If you are tasting something and you are trying to figure out what it is, you nullify your your brain's ability to focus on your palate and to genuinely um, you know compare one whiskey to another. You're trying to tell your brain is trying to tell you what is this, or it's trying to ask what is this instead of like is this one touching more parts of my tongue than the other one, and I have to I have to omit that I have to delete that like what is this out of my brain, otherwise I'm tasting 100 spirits in a moment, and I'm gonna spend most of my time like is this Jack Daniels or is this Stag is this Old Forester. Uh, or is this uh, larceny? You know, you, you got it. You have to move on from that. And I and I think it's a it's a very it, it's a very um, high level professional thing that you have you have to you have to cross that line if you want to you know judge whiskeys objectively because the moment that you think that you know what something is. You start critiquing it based on the brand that you think it is and not the whiskey itself. And that's very, very dangerous when you are critiquing in a blind flight. It's very dangerous to do that. So, um, yeah, so no, I do not, I do not try to, I try to keep myself from thinking about what the brand is and just focus on the whiskey. And uh, last question here comes from uh, Club Marzipan member, uh, Philip Bosch. Uh, how do you weigh innovation or evolution of a whiskey versus a product that doesn't change year over year and still does well against other whiskeys? Well, that's a great question. And I gotta be honest with you. I feel like a product that doesn't change year over year and still is great, I feel like that's innovation because there's so much temptation uh, on these brands to start doing barrel finishes to add to add uh, staves or wood chips or do do the trendy blend of straights there's so much pressure out there because everyone else is doing it um, but you know what I I don't um, I don't know I, I, I feel like just doing good old-fashioned straight bourbon is is pretty damn innovative and it's pretty great when you do it right now all of the innovation that's out there i i think that it's um over oversold there and i talked about this in the article i wrote on fredminnick.com there is a an enormous amount of bad whiskey on the market right now and some of i mean retailers are turning away uh good brands good brands that are making good whiskey because they uh, have found that their shelves are overloaded with whiskey that consumers don't want. And so that's 
that's sagging out of the market. Now, the main brands are doing great, and the brands who have backing and everything, those are doing great, and the category itself is doing great. But there's only so many blends of straights that can be finished in a sherry barrel. There's only so many blends of straights that can be can have a uh, Amberana uh, uh, wood chips added to them. You know, it's just not that that side of the business. These people trying to be innovative there, here and there, it's not sustainable. Um, that being said, I I rewarded things that I like, which is good whiskey. And if you take a look at that list, in my opinion, that is all good whiskey and some great some exceptional and whatever wins it you know i'm going to taste these all i'm going to taste these all blind and i am not going to know what they are i'm going to taste 100 products no uh december 20th at 7 p.m and <laughs> i'm going to try and do it within two hours and i'm going to rank them we'll see i mean hopefully my palate's on on point hopefully um i i show up and and my palate doesn't suck so you know <laughs> but yeah that's the that, that's my thought process there uh at any rate uh thank you for tuning in if you're not already become a subscriber make sure you check us out on december 20th when we are doing the blind bourbon live you can find it right here on this channel so be safe out there. Come see us at Club Marzipan. Description in the... Wait. Link in the description. I was going to say description in the bio. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Cheers, y'all. And remember, vodka sucks. Ooh.